so touched on childhood a little bit, the tour life. So also let's let's get into this music. Yeah. Just release, you know, ways, which you know, kind of like a similar vibe to chance. But speaking on the record, you had said, hold on, and I wanna I wanna pull this up because this quote got me. You said I wrote this record because okay. I needed to put my feelings on the line. I needed to understand if the feelings I was having were mutual and I found out that they were but with limitations. So with me listening to the record. I, I said that though. Yeah, <laughs> listen, exactly. That's what we're about to touch into. So you know, don't give me a pen. Record. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you not wrong. Because when I read that, I'm like, wait a minute, okay, this is a little let, let me make a note of this. So like I wanted to know for you, uh, especially when it comes to you know being a man in the industry. Was it hard to be that vulnerable one with yourself and also with your art and allowing to put it out? Oh, I love that you said that. Um, I think the industry now have made me that vulnerable bef than, than before. Like, and that's, that's, I, and I love it because I'm able to like live it right now as, as, as thorough and as I can be. It's real raw, it's organic. And I, I don't, no one's telling me no. Like before, let me tell you, that I'll tell you since you're talking about this, when I was a jazz musician, I went into the major label and they did not care. They didn't want it. They didn't want anything. It wasn't, and like, I'm not kidding you. I was a little bit down, depressed about that probably for a long time until I saw Masego. It just inspired me. And I literally just started playing again the saxophone, like on popular music with our music that I'm making now probably when I saw Masego. So when was that, like four years ago, four or five years ago? Otherwise, I felt, I just, they didn't care. And that really hurt my feelings because I'm sitting there like, as a musician, like, wouldn't that be a plus to play a jazz instrument or just an instrument? They didn't care. So like now, like, I just, we just wrote something the other day and, and my producer was like, yo, Played a sax on it, and I was just marvelled. He 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 was tripping me. Like I've done it since since then, but just like every time he's telling me that, I'm like, what? And I go crazy. <laughs> was the resistance from the major label when it came to certain things what led you to be like, you know what? Let me go this independent route and get myself together and figure this out for me. Yeah, but it was it wasn't it wasn't. I don't know if it was resistance. It was just the what the position I was in. Like I was there in the label and then like my the president left and the A and R's left and they were all sweet. So it was they were never rude. Like they were never bad people or anything. Or they might be bad people, but they were nice to me. <laughs> but like but like um like so it was never really not that it was supportive, it's just that they get it's a business. So once it's that, they just kinda like whatever and moved on with their lives and I'm stuck there. So I of course got depressed as most artists do. I started focusing on filmmaking, which was a blessing in a general thing. And then like well, I was I was not I was inspired to actually get back and start doing music. And um it was just a golden moment that inspired me and I was like, what? <laughs> so little segue. So like you say, you were depressed for a certain point in time. Um and unfortunately I think that does like come with being a creative like that depression just kind of hits, you know, throughout. But when you say that, and also with May being Mental Health Awareness Month, was there a point where you were like, okay, I'm in this depression, you know, how do I get myself right? And how do I move forward in a more positive than destructive direction? Um, hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I think God just was watching over me in a weird, in a, in a, not a weird way, but just like a solid way. Um, angelically, like, I think that, cause I don't, I don't remember the thoughts of how to get it over, get over it. I, I'm, I'm an avid therapy. I go to therapy. Like I'm avid at that. I, now I'm like there all the time, like to talk about it, like every other week, literally, you know, but like in that time I was using like drugs, just doing ridiculous stuff. I was promiscuous, cheating on my girlfriend, all kinds of horrible things that I guess were supposed to make me feel good, but it really didn't. And then I think that it was just the grace of just God 
who gave me uh, he gave he sent signs to me that helped help me you know like some major signs that I yeah it was just major signs I was like what <laughs> No, I understand that because, like I say, creative depression go through it, going through it right now. So wholeheartedly, we see each other. I understand. Yeah. Um, people should know. You should know, like you know, it's 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 one of those things that you know. I don't think that, like, I don't even know if I understood it as much as I do now with the knowledge. So, like, for us people out there that's going through this stuff, it's very very common. Like, it's nothing that most of us don't already go through. We just don't know. We're just now understanding how to name it. You know what I mean? Like, like so so to to go through it and then you realize what's happening, it's a great awakening to it. But it's nowadays you get help. You talk to people. People are open to it. People are vulnerable for you. you you're vulnerable to, to them and, and no one's judging you. You know, obviously there's a stigma on some of us, the black and brown community, to be like, that way in general but honestly stigma with all communities you know what i mean they say that but it's they say that because that is true but it's a stigma across the board to be really honest you know no you're not wrong you're not wrong at all especially in the day and age of social media and seeing the having the accessibility to seeing what people say and how they react and you know the knowledge and things like that you know right. so that is an important part in the growth and addressing mental health you know being open and vulnerable with the song and also depression and mental health. Is that part of the reason why you decided to name the forthcoming EP human to like, you know, human go through these feelings, go through these emotions sort of thing. Yes. You're absolutely right. And to me, the, the it's, it's, a um, it's, it's, it's actually going to be two parts. And then I haven't even announced that. So that's, that's new. But um, the way I did it is that, I said human just because it's called being vulnerable. We're all human. You know what I mean? And that was my way of being like vulnerability. Like I went through some things over the past two years that's been, you know, heartbreaking and challenging, you know, but it has allowed me to realize how human I am per se. Like we see so much stuff and we start getting digital. So we're not as we're now we're AI. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so to bring it back to where we are, it's just one of those things as my way of kind of just being vulnerable, honestly. And no, you know, and I understand that because you definitely you know we have like a real deep conversation, but you definitely was vulnerable on your forthcoming single bullshit. I ain't even going to hold you now. I was listening. I'm like, oh, he, he's he's setting some things off. He's like being real, letting it out there. So like what went into... Yeah the creation of the song and how did you feel after you completed it? Um, you know what? I'm going to tell you, this is a secret. Like a lot of times when I write these songs, I black out. I feel like bullshit was vomiting at the mouth. It's something I needed to say. And I'm not kidding you. When I said I wrote this song in like 15 minutes, like I, I I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Like it's the weirdest thing for me, but, which helps me know that when people hear this stuff, I'm getting really, I've been performing it on um, on the tour and the reception's been crazy. And just to understand like, like that people immediately feel that, it just, it's the most rewarding thing. So when I wrote the song, I wrote the song painfully real quick and then I moved on and I gave it to my producer and he made it really, really crazy. And then I started listening to it back and it really wasn't, I think I was numb to the situation. So it wasn't really until about probably about like, like a month ago, right before we, when we shot the, shot the single cover and stuff like that. Then I started really listening to it practically to just learn it for the, for the stage. And I was like, what, I said this? Like, so it's, it's so many things. Um, I feel like you heard the song obviously. So when, what I say in it, I think is empowering to women as well, even though I'm like mad, you know what I mean? Like, because the feeling is mutual wherever you are in relationship. So that's a good thing, man. I'm, I'm really excited to, be, to have been getting the reception already that I'm getting from that song. When I heard it, you know, I had to run it back a few times. Like, I don't know. I don't, it just did something to my spirit. I felt it, you know? 
Yeah, no, and that's that's exactly how I was feeling, man. That's so so raw of me, and, and I must say, for to, to, it was pretty bold because you know <laughs> what I say. So no, 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 no. I appreciate it. You know, keep it going. Keep keep the rawness going. You know, we 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 love that. People appreciate that.